as we are recording this, a horrendous heat wave is coming across the United States. Yeah. And at the moment, I... I'm really grateful that I don't have any senior animals. I think my oldest, well, they are senior, but they don't seem senior to me <laughs> since, you know, I've had some live to 15 or 16. I think the oldest ones I have out there now are like maybe 12. I know right now, like I am worried enough about my young, healthy animals surviving in this 90 to hundred degree heat. And I know some parts of the country it's, it's even surpassing a hundred um, what are some of the things, like if you have, um, really any animal and like, is there anything extra we need to be concerned about with our senior animals? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, again, this is a great point to bring up. So topical because we are indeed experiencing this wild heat wave. I know right now here in Mississippi, I think it's like 96 and feels like 106 and tomorrow, I think it's going to be like 98 degrees or something. So, um, it is very, very hot. And yeah, I, you know, the, the challenge with the animals that are geriatric or very young is that they don't necessarily handle environmental swings like this very well. Um, you know, I will, I'll, I'll make a point about maybe an older animal that is in a different kind of realm of what we consider older animals being. Normally we think older animals might be thin, but there are a lot of animals that have been supplemented their entire lives. Um, and they are therefore a little obese. Um, those animals, they do not handle the heat as well as our animals that are in better body condition. Um, it's almost like when they're really, really fat, the heat is much more challenging. And when they're really, really thin, the cold is much more challenging. Um, and basically, you know, it takes uh, a lot to try and cool an animal down, a person down. Um, the goats don't normally sweat, like we see uh, sweating from horses and so their, their thermoregulation is not um, as efficient as our thermoregulation would be. You know, we, we rarely see a goat running around outside or a cow running around outside with sweat soaked on their back. Um, they just don't have the sweat glands like we do necessarily. Um, so when it comes to extreme heat, I think the important thing is shade. Absolutely. I think uh, when I see a pasture with no shade, no way to escape the sun. Um, that's very concerning for me. I, I know for a fact that I wouldn't want to be in a situation like that, but uh, any, any mammal is going to want somewhere to kind of escape from the sun, get out of the bright. Um, and it's amazing, even at 90 degrees, 98 degrees, how much cooler it is in the shade. Um, so we have to kind of take that into consideration. If you have a barn, if you have a, a place with electricity, getting fans is never a bad idea. Um, of course, anything you add to a barn or to an area that has straw or hay or wood adds a fire risk. But um, honestly, if you have a, a solid electrical grid out there, getting some uh, fans is so helpful for multiple reasons. One, it's helpful to kind of circulate air as best as possible. Uh, two, it helps fly control. So um, another big issue we deal with in the summertime, of course, is flies. And if an animal is down and can't get up really well or lays there, maybe has manure surrounding it, uh, the flies can be just as uh, annoying as a very hot uh, time of year. Um, the other thing too, if they're indoors, make sure that there's some kind of ventilation happening. So if they have a barn or a shed or something, uh, put make sure that windows are propped open so that air flow through, flows through the barn. Um, and that will allow for some kind of uh, ventilation, some kind of breezeway effect that's gonna help decrease some of the heat issues in these, these animals. Um, you know, I, if, if push comes to shove, and uh, we do this a lot for obviously animals that are heavily fleeced, so like animals like um, angora goats, for example, or if we we're going to work with sheep or, or alpacas or llamas, shearing, shaving, shaving down and getting um, some of the hair off of these animals. It, you don't have to do your whole herd, uh, but maybe if you have one geriatric animal that seems to struggle with the heat, um, shaving that animal down, getting that hair, that excess hair off. Because sometimes our, our older animals, they don't shed out their winter coats as well either. Um, they tend to, you know, not necessarily, especially if they're not as mobile, they're not walking and rubbing and kind of getting rid of some of that down coat that they have from the winter. So going in and trying to brush, brush or shave that animal and get some of that hair off them is important. Um, and then if, if you really want to, there's something that we use oftentimes in dairy cattle, especially uh, kind of commercial, conventional dairy cattle, we use misters and um, water sources. And so if you have a spray bottle and you go out there and just spritz some of your animals, that, that effect of the um, evaporation off of the skin is cooling. 
So if you have some kind of uh, ability to do that, if you have like, a, or you spray them down, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend going out there and spraying everything with a hose. Uh, I think they might freak out <laughs> if you spray them all with a hose, but if you have some kind of um, misting ability, maybe when they're in the barn, you just give them a nice little mist of a spray bottle um, in the heat, the hottest time of the day, some of that can help with uh, controlling some of that heat. Right now, I think the biggest thing though with this heat wave coming through is just to watch your animals closely. If you notice that your animals are struggling or if you notice that they are, you know, I mean, for me, I, I get concerned about open mouth breathing when I see an animal that's just um, laying, on, <clears throat> laying down on the ground and not really being stressed. Um, that's something that would be a little concerning. Maybe you should look at trying to move those animals to a, an area that maybe is a little bit cooler. Um, and then of course, I would warn against aggravating them or working them up right now. So if you're, um, you know, going to go out there and try and trim feet, it may not be the best time to do it. And it's 98 degrees and you're chasing them all around the barn because you're going to suffer and so are they. Um, so keep that in mind, you know, when it's this heat wave. I mean, I personally, as a veterinarian, I'm a little slow looking at my calendar here. I'm a little slow this week and I'm not surprised because not only do the people not want to be out there, but I, I also don't want to schedule a ton of appointments where I'm going to work up a bunch of animals um, and then end up having them go into heat exhaustion or, or heat stress. Uh, and, and heat can kill an animal. We, we see dogs, many times dogs go into emergency rooms with temperatures of 107 or more. Um, there's a certain point where the temperature is so high that it will fry a brain. Uh, and so we have to be very cognizant of that. Fortunately, I mean, goats can get very hot and be okay. So don't panic. I thought they're probably not gonna get fried just by sitting out in the sun. But um, if we go out there and work those animals and try to get them you know, worked up, we might end up with some issues. Yeah, that's a really good point. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been really informative. And so I think this has been a very helpful uh, episode. Thanks for joining us. Of course, thanks again for inviting me. And if anyone has any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out. Um, and I appreciate you help welcoming me back. <clears throat> awesome.